Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube video. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is teaching you how to use a debugger. Now I'll be using the VS Code debugger here and I'll be working in a Python script, but don't worry, this video will apply to any debugger for any development environment that you use. And if you're not sure what a debugger is or where you even access it, you'll need to be using an IDE to get access to a debugger. There's some tools that aren't IDEs that have it, but in most cases an IDE, which is an integrated development environment, will come with some kind of debugging tool, and that be debugging tool will look very similar to the one I'm about to show you here, and will definitely have the same four or five commands that I'm going to be uh, aiming to teach you about how they work. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now what is a debugger? A debugger is really a tool to help you look at what's going on in your program. Usually when people are debugging, what they'll do is they'll do something called print debugging. So if you've never seen a debugger before, you're not using some fancy tool or environment, your way of probably checking what's going on is printing things out to the console or printing things to your terminal or wherever you're running your program. So you might do that by just going in here and say, okay, well, I want to print what numbers is. Just have a look at that here and see if things are what I expect them to be. That's totally fine. You can do that. And for simple programs and for, you know, simple scripts and whatever you have, that's totally fine. And I do that all the time as well. But as soon as you get into something that's pretty complicated where you might not know the values you actually want to look at, maybe there's a lot of files, there's a lot of different states that you want to examine, it can get really messy if you're just printing values out into the console. So instead, you use a tool like a debugger. Now right here I actually have my debugger active, it's currently running, and I'll explain what all of this is doing later, but you can see that I'm actually able to look at all of the different values in my program. So I have a breakpoint right here, which essentially tells the debugger, hey, I want to stop, pause, and have a look at what's going on at this point in time on line 25, the one that's highlighted yellow. On the left hand side here, you can see that it shows me locals and globals. I can click into these and I can actually have a look at all of the variables that are associated with the current scope that I'm in. So here, for example, average is a variable that stores the kind of pointer to this function right here. Generate numbers, oh, well that's a variable that stores the pointer to this function right here. Highest running average, same thing. Random, oh, what's that? That's the variable associated with this import. So you can actually go in and look at all of the different values associated with each of these variables. Now in this case, it's not super useful because these are just functions, but I will show you throughout this video, of course, how we can look at actual code and not just function pointers and all of that. But this is just to give you an idea of what a debugger can really do. So you place these little breakpoints, which I'll show you how to do again. And then what you can do is use some of the commands that are up here in this menu bar that I'm moving around, which I'm going to leave up here to actually step and navigate through your code. So there's three main tools here that you want to know how to use step over, step into, and step out of. Now they each have shortcuts. You can see the keyboard shortcuts right here. I'm going to be showing you how to use these, but I just want to, again, give you an example of what they can actually do. So look here when I click step over, what this does is actually move this little pointer here to the next line of code. So you can see that now what I actually have is a variable called nums that stores all of the nums that were generated from this line. So I can actually go ahead and have a look at what all of these different numbers are. I can see the properties, for example, the length of that list. So there's a hundred different numbers and anything else that's related to nums. I can go ahead and I can actually look at that, which is great. What I can do next is I can step over again. So I can step over that, um, that line right here. Nothing's changed because I haven't updated any variables or anything into the scope. And then what I could do is actually step out of, and what that will do is take me outside of the current scope, which in this case will end the program. So now that I've given you a little bit of an example, let's go into some more detail and show how we can really use this debugger effectively. So I figured that before I actually go into a full example and illustrate the debugger, I should probably show you how to open the debugger and what the core features of it are, just so you know while we go through this video. So it's going to be different to open a debugger uh, in whatever environment you're working in, so whatever IDE you have. Usually what you're going to want to look for though is something that has a little bug icon and a uh, kind of play sign like this or play logo. So in VS Code to access the debugger what you do is on the little left hand menu bar here you press on this icon that I'm pressing on here. 
This will open up the debugger, and right now I currently have mine active, but if I stop it by hitting the stop button, you'll see that it shows run and debug like this, and it shows you where all of your breakpoints are in this little pane down here. So this is great, this is a good way to organize your breakpoints. You can see I've added a bunch here, and it shows me where they are by line number, and I can simply deactivate them by just unchecking that button. It grays it out, and what that means is I'm not gonna remove that breakpoint, but I just want you to ignore it for now. It's almost like commenting the breakpoint out, if you wanna think of it like that. So once you're ready to actually run your code, you can click run and debug. It's gonna be different in whatever environment. In this case, you have to select what file you want, so I'll click Python file. Here we go ahead and we start debugging and then we hit the most recent breakpoint and then here we are. Now the other two features that I kind of want to discuss here is this watch pane and this call stack. So I won't be using these in the examples because we don't really need to, but say there's a certain expression that you want to watch or say there's a certain value you want to look at that isn't directly written inside of this code. So I've already showed you, um, and I actually I'll show you here, you can highlight over top of um, specific values if they've already been defined and you can get actually what the value is. But let's say there's no, you want to create your kind of own value to look at. What you do is use this watch tab and you can go ahead and type in variables that you want to look at. So let me just step over here quickly um, and we'll go to generate numbers. Let's just keep stepping for one second. I'm going to step there. So say we're here and we're at this point. And what I want to actually do is look at a slice of nums. So rather than looking at what all of the numbers are, I just want to look at a slice of it. What I can actually do is write nums and then I could say like colon five and hit enter. And what that will do is let me watch exactly the expression I type in here. So I can watch what a slice of up to five of the numbers is from this watch tab. So that's really useful. You can add as many things to watch as you want. You can literally <laughs> do something like, you know, seven less than five. You can watch that. That's just always going to be false. Uh, any expression you want, you can put in here. It will evaluate it after every time you step and you'll be able to watch that, right? If that makes sense. The call stack is kind of a little bit complicated, so I'm not really going to explain it, but this will show you what you're going to be returning to if you're calling into a specific function. So I'll show really quickly. If I go step into here, you can see the call stack now has module and then running average what this is telling you is that if you step back you're gonna go from running average to module and actually let me just step over here a little bit let me step into and you can see now we have three things on the call stack so average running average module this means if you step out of average you'll go to running average if you step out of running average you'll go back to module so that is the basics those are the main features now we'll get into a full example and really talk about how all these tools work so again, you want to use the debugger when things are complicated and when you want to take kind of a snapshot of your code at a certain point and look at what's going on in a specific place. The way you do that is by placing breakpoints. So breakpoints, these apply to all different debuggers and typically what they are is a red circle. You can see I'm placing a ton here in what's called the gutter beside all of these line numbers. So there's different ways to play, place breakpoints uh, in different editors and there's different ways of seeing them and displaying them, but usually you place them in the gutter. So that's either on the left or right hand side of wherever your code is. Sometimes you might have to right click and it says place breakpoint. There might be a shortcut for that, but find how to place a breakpoint and essentially place, place them where you want to have a snapshot and take a look at your code. Now you can place as many breakpoints as you want. Uh, you can place as few as you want, but if you want the debugger to actually run and be active, you need to place at least one. The reason for that is because the debugger does not stop running the program until it sees a breakpoint. So if I go here and click run and debug and I run my Python file, notice that we don't get any lines. We, the debugger doesn't activate. We don't highlight anything. We don't see any variables in the left hand side. The reason for that is because I didn't place any breakpoints. So if I go ahead now and I place a breakpoint inside of average here like this, so I'll place one right now, what's going to happen is every single time that my program hits this breakpoint, we're going to pause and have a look at what's going on. So let's see when I click run and debug what happens when I place a breakpoint right here. So immediately, the first place I get into here is average. So it did whatever else in the code we had to do. And as soon as average was called, boom, it stopped. And it shows me the local variables associated with this function. So you can see it's showing me D and N, so 246 and 1, and that's saying the denominator is 246 and the numerator is 1. I might have messed up the way that those should go, but either way, you see them right here. And now what I can do is use some of these tools here to step through my code and see what else is going on. 
So the three tools that we want to learn is step over, step into, and step out. The first one is the easiest, it's step over. All that does is move you to the next line of code. So if you press step over, what it's going to do is just go down to the next line that you see um, in your code that you would assume that you would go to. If you call step into, what this will do is step into any method calls, function calls, anything that's happening on the current line. So on this line here, let's say I called another function and I called running average like that. What this would do if I called step into is actually bring me into this function here and then we'll start running again where we're going to start from the top and continue and we use these commands here to continue navigating through the code. If I press step out of, what this does is take me out of the current scope. So we'll look for the last return statement inside of, or is it the last return statement? Yes, I believe it's the last return statement inside of whatever function we're at or whatever return statement it hits, sorry. And then it will simply exit out and go back to where it was called from. So if I call step out, it will bring me to where we called this average function from and then the next line after that. So let me show you what step out does because it is definitely the most complicated. We'll call step out and you can see it brings me to current average, which is where we called this average function from. That is what step out does. Now what I'm gonna do is called step into. We're going to move to the next line because there was nothing to step into there and we'll step into again. Now since there was nothing to step into, right, there was no method calls, we move to the next line. Now I can press step over or step into because there's nothing to step into here. Actually let's see what step into does. It just moves us to the next line. We'll step into that and now let's step into here. What that does is bring me up to the average function because I called the average function on this line. So we stepped into that function call. Now we're back here again and we can do whatever we want. In fact, something that we can do is press play. So if we press continue, which is F5, what this will do is move the program along until we hit another breakpoint. So we'll say, okay, we don't want to step around anymore. We don't need to navigate. Let's just keep moving. So let's go continue and boom, where does it bring us back? Right into the average function because that was the next place that our program went to the next breakpoint that it hit. And if I keep playing, you can see on the left hand side here, these local variables are being updated because the average function keeps getting called. So I can keep pressing play and I can look at all of the different values inside of this average function. Let's say we're done. We don't want to debug anymore. What we can do next is we can hit the pause. Boom, we'll be done and we stop debugging. Now that is the basics of using a debugger. And that's all you really need to know is what those few different commands do. So now let's place a few more breakpoints and maybe some more interesting places. So I'll place one uh, on the averages up here. We'll place one actually on return averages and then maybe we'll place one on uh, down here. So after we generate the numbers. Okay, so let's run this now and let's see what happens when we have more breakpoints in our program. All right, so the first breakpoint is right here. So right after we generate our numbers, we can have a look at the numbers here. I'm not too you know, concerned about stepping through this anymore. So what I'll do is press play and notice it brings us to our next breakpoint, which was up here. You can see where we are based on this little kind of house shaped yellow thing around the breakpoint and the highlight of the line. This will move down on the line to show you where you currently are. So we have numbers, which is a local variable associated with this parameter. And notice when I highlight this, I can actually go ahead and see the value of all of these numbers. That's a cool feature inside of VS Code. Next, I'm going to step over that will bring us to total. Now I can highlight over averages and we can see that it's length zero, simply an empty array. Let's click um, play again, or actually let's click step over. So we're going to step over here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to step over this as well. So we get into total. Boom, look, total is now updated to 279 because we added the value of num, which what is num? Let's highlight over it, 279. Let's step over again. We can see now current average is 279. The return value from average was 279, so it's showing us that. And now average doesn't have anything in it yet. Let's step over again and notice average now gets updated with 279. So that is a very useful thing to be able to do because you can step through a for loop and see exactly what's happening. Let's say I'm done with this for loop. I don't want to do it anymore. Let's press play. Now we can see all these values are updated. The last number we were at was 287. The current average was 156 and all the averages are stored inside of the running averages list right here. 
Awesome. So now let's see where this return goes to. So we can go ahead and go step out or we can just step over and that will bring us back. So let's go step out and step out brings us to here because this was where it was called from running average. And now let's go step over. All right, and let's step into this now because I want to step into any function calls that happen on this line, which should be highest running average. So we're going to step into brings us to highest running average, which calls running average. Let's step into there again. That brings me into running average because it brought me into any function calls on that line. Let's step out. That brings me to the return statement or actually, sorry, where the other breakpoint was. Let me remove that. Let's go step out. Now we're here. Okay, let's just step over, step over, and we are done. There was no more breakpoints, and we finished the program. So that is pretty much how a debugger works. Those are the three main tools. You have your pause, uh, so five main tools, sorry, your pause, your step over, step into, step out, and I guess your continue or whatever the other button it was going to be. And that really is all you need to know to effectively use a debugger. When you're working on something, you want to figure out what a certain piece of code looks like in a certain area, what all the values of everything are, what the state is. You simply place a breakpoint. You can place multiple breakpoints if you want, and then you press play. You get to that breakpoint. It will pause. You can step through your code however you want. You can press play when you're done, and you can continue from there. So with that being said, that has been my tutorial on how to use a debugger. Again, some of these things may vary depending on what uh, environment you're using, what e like what editor you have, how much code you have, how many files. I will note that if you're working with multiple files, the debugger does work and it will go between the different files when you step into something or step out, which is definitely really useful. And yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about this. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in another YouTube video.